even if that was true, even if that was true, nice hit pull. That's not an argument. Yeah, what's he saying there? Okay, this is really dumb. Hit he pull? says nice what's identity politics. You know, mm-hmm. that's not an argument. Okay, this is such a weird... I don't even know if it's intentional. I don't know if I don't know if Vash understands that what's happening or if he's just such an attack mode that it's like <laughs> blinded him. He's like a rabid dog. I don't know if it's bad faith or what. But um of course he's going to bring up identity politics because he's the woman brought up identity politics in the first place. She said that black Americans were the ones promoting these social welfare programs. And then he responds to that by saying black Americans are not advocating for that statistically according to whatever numbers he has and then vosh responds to that by saying why is thomas soul bring up identity politics like that's like are you insane yeah like that's the topic that he's res- he's literally responding to a topic about identity politics so either this is like vosh is in attack mode so much that he's not paying attention doesn't understand the conversation or he's just is like legit gaslighting it's legit gaslighting. I'm going to call it right now. Okay, he knows so the difference. He's, he's a master. Vosh is a mastermind. We're talking 140 <laughs> IQ here. He knows what's going on. This is 100% gaslighting. Of course. I don't know of how course. you could think it was anything else. Sit. That's true. That's true. I forgot. I'm so sorry. Take an opinion on such matters of should people be paid equally or should there be this or that. Black people have never taken a position that you describe. Wait, black people have never taken the position that they should be paid equally to white people? What the fuck are you talking about? So <laughs> this is another problem with the with Vosh. Vosh doesn't seem to understand how time works because this mm-hmm. video was obviously made what 30 years ago? <laughs> And a lot has happened that Thomas Sowell couldn't have known about because he's in the past now. <laughs> Those things happened after the video was filmed. Well, I mean, before, before, yeah, that's true. But before any of that stuff, again, he's created like this crazy straw on Thomas Sowell. Like, like, look, let's go back a second so you can see the context of what Thomas Sowell. Yeah, he's talking about affirmative action. Right. Pitbull. That's not an argument. What's I'm he say there? What's the words that he says there? Hit poll? He says id poll. He id says that's id poll. Identity politics. Oh, okay. Good. Black people have never supported, for example, affirmative action, POTUS, anything of that sort. Wherever polls have been... Uh, okay. So the context is Thomas Sowell says black people have never supported affirmative action or quotas. And he's referring to racial hiring quotas. Correct. Okay. Yes. What is this Uncle Ruckus shit of never taking taking a black opinion hold on hold on hold on even if that was true even if that was true nice hit pull that's not an argument taking a black opinion on such matters of should people be paid equally or should there be this or that black people have never taken a position okay so it's very clear unless you're trying to be like the most disingenuous person on the planet or you're just so possessed by your political animus that you can't perceive reality it's very clear that what Thomas Sowell just said was that he's making the claim that black people don't support affirmative action, quotas. And when he says being paid equal, what he means is that there should be some sort of make, you know, some sort of like, oh, black people should generate the same amount of wealth as white people, regardless of their position, or that he's talking about when he says equal, he's talking about um, affirmative action still in quotas. Okay. Obviously, Thomas Sowell is not saying that black people should be paid less for doing the same amount of work as white people. Obviously, he's not saying that. No one is saying that. But that is how Vash is interpreting his statement. He's interpreting it in the most negative possible way. Yes. Which is an insane position he obviously doesn't have. That you just wait black people have never taken the position that they should be paid equally to white people. What the f- like that's obviously not what he said the fuck are you talking about yeah what yeah what is this uncle ruckus shit like hey i'm a black guy i met a lot of black people we don't actually care about being paid the same what the (laughs) fuck is going on right now it's just i mean do you think that this is intentionally dishonest or he's just so he's in attack mode he just doesn't understand he's just blind to it he's just looking for any like little hook he can grab onto and say hey bad man Soul bad man. I don't think much thought goes into any of this, to be honest with you. I don't think he has a, a broad base of knowledge. I think mm-hmm. 
you know, Vosh woke up in the morning, a bunch of people from his Patreon were asking him, this Thomas Sowell, you know, I lost an argument to a guy who kept talking about Thomas Sowell. Why, why did I lose that argument? Help me. Right. right? I want to win that argument. We need to destroy this Thomas Sowell. He's like, I've never heard of Thomas Sowell. I went to university for four years and got a degree in sociology and they never made me re read a conflict of visions, <laughs> but let's, let's Google him and I'll figure it out. I'll figure out right. what's wrong with this Thomas, Thomas. So well guy, <laughs> we'll take care of this for you. And then he just, he just, like he doesn't even, I brought up the rest of the video so we could at least watch the entire context of the video. He doesn't care about this stuff. He's not interested. I, I would go as far as saying, that Vosh is not even really that interested in politics, to be to be very honest with you. Because how how I mean, oh my God. Uh I'm a, I'm assuming he's in his twenties when I when I was in my twenties, like all I could do is read like polit I was obsessed with politics. If you're obsessed with politics, you read everything. Like granted, all the stuff that I was reading was like left wing stuff because you know that tends to be where you start, but like what do you think Vosh does any casual reading of politics i mean maybe i'm wrong but i well I don't. i'm sure he does he does readings for things that he agrees with already or things that he can use in arguments i mean i i think you i think you hit the 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 nail on the head there with the idea that like oh if he if he got a degree in sociology or, or whatever in school like they should be teaching you thomas soul you need to have a, a wide variety of, of very different opinions to be able to form a coherent worldview or even to form your own worldview if you're just fed the same you know slop you're just going to regurgitate that slop you need to kind of go out there on your own and draw from a bunch of sources and try to forget the way the world works yeah you're looking for truth but bosch isn't looking for truth I, i'm right. curious as hell like like i said bosch is the only one i know that has a recent sociology degree like i i encountered sociology through jonathan height which made me fascinated by sociology and i've read a bunch of sociology so i i don't think well maybe sociology is a lost cause now because all the gender feminists moved in and changed it completely to something different like it used to be about uh understanding the workings of society so you would have better outcomes in society incentives economics <laughs> Economics right. is a social science, but uh, ha go ahead. I'm sorry, Havlin Beckland for four ninety nine says, "I mean, also Thomas Sowell has tons or tomes of data to back up his points, not just blind fucking ideology, but whatever." Sitch, wow, someone's very triggered. <laughs> well, he he does. That's one of the that's one of the no, things so I, I love about him. I assume. So I assume what Havlin is getting very triggered about. And so it's just so funny because like I could defend someone's character and then I say disagree with their points and then you know that's enough to trigger some people. So I do believe that most people uh, are are have an ideology they believe in and then they try to justify it after the fact. Yes. This is true for most people. And I do believe that even though Thomas Sowell is a very intelligent person who does have tons of data, that he is just as guilty of doing that as every other human being on the planet. And so Thomas Sowell is just as much going to be looking for the information and the data that supports uh, his causes as anyone else's. So if that triggers you, well, I hate to break it to you, but that's just the reality of the situation. Well, if, if you think, if you think anyone who, if you think anyone who has a very strict political idea or political ideology, like knows the truth about what's up, then you're you're still living in the bubble okay it's just a different kind of bubble you don't you don't know until you try it out like uh, right one of milton freeman's policies has been the the school voucher thing which i you know i've heard a lot about it i heard him explain it it's definitely an interesting proposal to me the thing that you don't know is the unintended consequence which is generally the conservatives are the ones that are saying there are unintended right. consequences that you have to be right. aware of. So a lot of the, the programs that he's pitching, like he definitely seems very cavalier about them, but until you try them, I don't necessarily know well, that, that they the would The school work. voucher thing is very interesting because like ideologically, I don't 
have any, I don't care if I score mm-hmm. vouchers. Right. Um, now I've heard from people who actually, I remember I was talking to this person who they, they used to work for uh, like a private, I'm trying to remember what the guy's name was. There's this guy who's like, Oh, I'm going to open a bunch of private schools in uh, this place in Florida. That was like the largest school district mm-hmm. in Florida. And they were going to show that like public education was like bad. And they were going to show like they knew how to like fix education. And it's funny because what they found was the exact same thing that public education found the way that they taught the kids almost had no impact on, on their grades or anything. It was just the areas that the schools were in. So if it was in a good area, the kids did well. If it was in a bad area. The schools did see that me. that's unintended consequences all the way. Like you don't right. well, it's just, like it, the psychological environment. It's right. all the difference. Well, it, in the it, world. It, yeah. It shows that like, maybe the thing you think is the, the factor isn't the factor that there's a lot of other factors at play here. Oh man. And it's so, it's just, it's so analogous but, to like surgery. Like, they're doing learning in a dirty operating room. Of right, course right. you're going to have bad outcomes. But the, the reason I bring that up and the reason I find it interesting is because like, as I said, I don't have any, I can say, I don't, I don't think school vouchers is necessarily going to solve the problem, but I don't have like an ideological concern against it. I don't really care about it. But the thing that's interesting to me is that people for some reason can't, most people anyway, can't seem to hold that concept in their mind that they don't think something's going to work, but they don't agree with it ideologically. Because if you talk to most people on the left about school vouchers, they have like, they get like very angry about it. Like they have some like emotional component to it. They like, they have like some ideological reason why they think it's bad. And whenever I've asked them to explain it, I don't get like a real, I feel like I don't get a real answer why they're against school vouchers. Because they don't like conservatives and that's a conservative program. Right, exactly. That's generally what it is. Right, but so, but that's my point. You said the conservative trigger word. I hate you now. I must fight you to the death. Right, and to me, that's what's so unfortunate is that it's like it's so easy for if one side of the of the argument advocates for something, it's so easy for the other side to become so emotionally turned against it for tribal reasons. They don't even need to be. They can just say, "Well, I don't think it's going to work." You don't have to be tribal about it. You have to be in this day and age. It's terrible, but you do. I know. I, I, I mean, I don't have like pulling data on hand. First of all, I don't need to support the popularity of these arguments to actually defend them. Even if nobody on earth defended these arguments, they would still be perfectly valid if they could be, if their premises could be defended. Which is irrelevant to the conversation because they're not, they're not talking about whether the, the programs work. They're talking about who advocated for the programs in the first place. So that's completely irrelevant to the conversation, Blash. <laughs> Uh, Econs 199 <laughs> says the virgin Pokemon versus the Chad Yu-Gi-Oh. We can't use Yu-Gi-Oh monsters for the, the, the analogy. No one's going to know what the fuck we're talking about. Pokemon's a great analogy. Uh, it is. Um, but um, you, should, but you should use the Pokemon analogy on those small government guys because who wants a fucking piddly little Pokemon? Come on. Nobody wants that. Nobody <laughs> wants that shit. See, and, and the best part about the Pokemon's argument is that I get, you get to hear Adam say Pokemon's. Pokemon, yeah. yeah, you got to get your big at your fucking big dick Pokemon out and fucking yeah. waste everyone, right? But even with that being said, you're telling me black black people literally fought in the civil rights movement to not be able to be discriminated against in the employment uh, with employment. That was literally what- we're talking about affirmative action, Bosh. It's, yeah, it's different. Right. <laughs> it's different here. They wanted to be able to compete for those jobs, not given those jobs as tokens what they fought against in large part which includes pay disparity so it is not a question of what black people chose to do it's what you you choose to put in the mouths of black people it's what you choose to, to project dude this is candace owens but 40 years ago this is the exact same set of arguments he so first you gotta love the comparison between <laughs> candace owens and thomas soul that's got come on cinch you that, broke that, you broke your pencil or something. What? You I did. <laughs> I well, it, that that hurt me because I really really hate Candace Owens. Um, <laughs> I know. Also, oh, do you God. do you conceptualize Candace Owens as like the super genius Thomas Sowell? Well, that's what's so funny. You got Thomas Sowell is obviously a very smart guy. He has this huge educational background, a drone. He's an econom. He's an economist, and he's also written like twenty books. Right. Here's what you know. It's so, again. 
again, from a critical race theory, okay, this really just shows how incredibly privileged and racist Fosh is, okay? He sees a black guy talking against oh, I know. Right-wing policies, and he's like, well, they must be like this other black person I know who's talking against left-wing policies, which is a very bigoted uh, thing to do. But the reason that they're so different, first of all, uh, Candace Owens, is in a, she's not libertarian whatsoever. No, whatsoever. conservative. Candace Owens yeah. is just anti- She's not anything, she's, come on. Yeah, she's cool. no, no, she's anti-left. That's, that's her thing, yeah. okay? She doesn't have, I don't think she has strong conservative positions or anything like that. She's just anti-left. It doesn't matter. She's not libertarian. She doesn't have some libertarian foundation whatsoever. She doesn't have some wealth of education or experience to draw upon like Thomas Sowell does. Like, What did Stoner and, Joe Rogan destroy Candace on? I can't remember. It was like on, it was on like the post office or something. <laughs> something. Or maybe that was David Or Rubin. climate they, change or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, or climate change. I don't know. It's just like, yeah, Candace Owens going on Joe Rogan and getting like fucking destroyed is by the, stoner. <laughs> by the stoner yeah it's so funny but uh, Candace Owens is like she like, I don't know if she's a grifter per se because I, I don't know don't if she believes well when I conceptualize grifter I conceptualize a person who knows what they're saying is not true I don't know if she knows what she's saying not true but Candace Owens is definitely a a political pundit who they look at everything from the angle of how can I use this to destroy the left? Fuck the left. I evil. think Candace, I think Candace Owens would say to herself, it could be true. Like she, she would not necessarily know if it's true or not, but the fact right. that it could be true. Well, that's good enough. Really? Right. <laughs> was it, remember she, she was talking to someone, didn't we stream this? She was talking to someone on her show where she said that like, like SJ, and this was years ago, this was like 2017, 2018. She's like, SJWs are just as bad as ISIS. And we're like, whoa, what the fuck is she talking about? So, well, I agree with that. So I'm there you go. I'm in her boat. I'm First in the of all, ISIS you, boat the, with the SJW. You're in the ISIS boat. There you, ha- there you have it, guys. Adam says with, with he's the, in the ISIS boat. <laughs> I see. And makes up a position of black people and then he says the person trying to help people black people is the real racist because they're pushing the narrative that black people don't want to be second class citizens into the mouths of black people this is this is the exact same set of arguments no wonder the conservatives like this guy so much it's perfect he we- he's anti idpol but he'll weaponize idpol when it's convenient to him he talks about the necessity for human freedom but then he'll use arguments of populism to argue against claims for human freedom he'll lie about the uh, needs and interests of black people and then claim others are racist when they tell him that that's actually not the case what a fucking cl- clown dude oh, oh yeah i thought he was going to say coon <laughs> i thought he was going to say coon <laughs> So, well, it's just funny because, first of all, uh, Sol didn't do any of the things that he just accused him of whatsoever. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, whatsoever. He doesn't. He, he just accused him of lying when he admitted he didn't know what the numbers are. I don't know what black support for affirmative action was in 1968 or whatever. I'm assuming, you know, Sol likes to have references. I don't, I'm assuming he just make that up. But um, so he just assumes that he's lying. And it's, this is just, uh, it's just so bad faith. It's disgustingly bad faith. Yeah, big time. That's all it is on Vosh's channel is bad faith. Right, and that's the thing. You, you go, you get very angry, and you get this tone of voice, and you get all heated, and you get this righteous indignation in your voice, and you're like, this is the bad man. He's the bad man. He's saying what the bad people are saying today. Ugh. And it's so funny because under critical race theory, this is just Vosh being super racist. He's denying the lived experience of a black person and black explaining to him, so... We, it's too bad we can't use that argument. Maybe we should become critical race theorists just there to get Vosh. What do you think? <laughs> I think that's a terrible idea. But I think we can pretend. It is a terrible idea, but I don't, I'm thinking it might work. Conversation. Yeah, just for the sake of this conversation, we'll just keep bringing it up. You know there are people that will will go that route, though. They're like, it, it's not such a terrible idea. <laughs> what are you guys right. talking about? We can, we can bring well, down Vosh. The thing is, most of the critical race theorists are probably hypocritical, too, because they're not going to... Oh, yeah. call, they would never call Vosh out for being racist in their definition against Thomas Sowell because they also don't like Thomas Sowell. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's all tribal politics. <laughs> yeah. It's all tribal politics at the end of the day. Just sad. 